Greetings, I'm Steve Bamford and welcome to the Steve Bamford Golf YouTube channel, the home of the Golf Betting Show and the Golf Betting System podcast. We are back with the 2024 RBC Heritage. The Golf Betting Show is for viewers of 18 and above. Please be gambleaware. You can visit begambleaware.org for more information and of course, Please bet responsibly. Don't forget to visit Golf Betting System, the number one free golf betting resource. Let's start with last week. Congratulations to those of you, those of you on Scotty Scheffler at the Masters, four to one. There was a tiny, tiny bit of nine to two out there as of Tuesday. Got the job done. Now, from my own perspective, I set you guys a target: six hundred and three likes was the biggest amount of likes that I'd ever had on one of the golf betting shows. Well, I can report, guys, and I'm looking literally at the report right now. You guys smashed it, absolutely smashed it. 872 likes for last week's Masters video, which was the biggest that we've ever had on the Golf Betting System YouTube channel, my own YouTube channel. Thank you so much. It's absolutely fantastic you got behind it, YouTube, and the algorithm clearly liked it. Right, what do I need from you this week? RBC Heritage, the video's out a little bit later this week. Um, 250 likes minimum, that'd be absolutely fantastic. I'm sure you guys can smash that. Can we actually get 300 likes on a video that's gone out 12 hours later than it usually does. I'll leave it to you guys. So please smash that like button. The algorithm's really responding to all of the feedback that you're getting to me. So please leave your comments in the comments section below. Last week, over 70 comments left. Thank you so much. Broad shoulders, just let me know who you're backing at this week's RBC Heritage. What you like, what you don't like. Do you like the show? Do you not like the show? Let me have it. Just comment for the algorithm. And on top of that, please press that subscribe button. We are very, very close to 4,500 subscribers. So press that subscribe button. Make sure your notifications are switched on. From a betting perspective, fairly disappointing. Xander never showed up on Thursday on the front nine. So it was never really a horse in the race. Did the decent thing, though, and did what Xander always does, just hangs around playing decent enough golf to bag a top 10 at a major, which he'd done. So we got that at 16 to 1. The disappointing one for me, Matsuama never show up, showed up. Lowry couldn't putt. The disappointing one was Patrick Reed. If he would have birded the 18th hole, in fact, if he'd have birded 13 and 15 as well, the par fives on the back nine, We'd have been in the money each way at 70 to 1. He came up a place short. So not that 70 to 1 return, but again, very, very fine margins. Let's put the 2024 Masters in the rearview mirror. Thank you ever so much for your support. If you are watching this, please follow me on X at Bamford Golf. Right, we've got a signature level event this week on the PGA Tour. It's a short field. There is no cut. Uh, Hideki Matsuama isn't playing. Victor Hovland isn't playing. The rest of the elites on the PGA Tour are at the Harbour Town Golf Links. Hilton Head, South Carolina. This is the usual stop-off after the Masters. The Royal Bank of Canada, the RBC Heritage. This golf course is the Harbour Town Golf Links. It says it's a Lynx, it really isn't. The 18th's about the only Lynxy kind of hole on here. It's a Pete Dye design, a 2000 uh, redesign. It is classified by myself as a Carolina type golf course. Don't forget, press that like button. 300 likes would be absolutely fantastic. Carolina type golf course. What do you mean by that? Well, clearly in South Carolina, tight, tree lined, dog legs. Lots and lots and lots of dog legs. That's a Carolina kind of golf course. I categorise it as a mid-score golf course as well. I think 17 to 19 under is the number you usually would need to win here. Don't see that changing in 2024. It's also a short golf course. A par 71 with three par fives, 7,000 
213 yards. It is not long. It's a positional golf course. Holes with water hazards in play, 18. Number of sand bunkers, 54. So quite light on the bunkers. Acres of fairway, 22. The, dark, the, the fairways are difficult to find here. Agronomy. Celebration Bermuda grass overseeded with perennial rye. Uh, the rough. Celebration Bermuda again with the rye. Two and a half inches in length, not overly onerous. Greens. This is the real feature of Harbour Town. 3,700 square feet on average. They are tiny. They are pretty much level with Pebble Beach. The sh smallest greens on the PGA Tour. They feature Tiff Eagle Bermuda grass. But as I've just said on the PGA, on the Golf Betting System podcast this week, they should kind of rename the PGA Tour the Overseeded with Poa Trivialis Tour because that's again what we've got. Bermuda Overseeded with Poa Trivialis. The amount, I love a fiver for every time I've said that so far this season. 2023, this course played at 70.22, so just around about three quarters of a stroke under par for the field. It was literally mid pack, 28th most difficult course of 49 on the tour. Don't see that changing this week. It has to be said, the forecast looks quite nice. 300 yard carry off the fairways. The width of the fairways here are 22 yards, so they are very, very thin. That compares with 29 yards at the Oaks course, where they played the Valero Texas Open the week before the Masters, and 30 to 40 yards wide at Memorial Park, where they played the Houston Open three weeks ago. So very, very thin fairways, but a short golf course. Um I think Will Zalatori said it best here uh, in a quote that I've put in the preview this week. That it's a positional golf course. Hitting fairways is not important. You have to be, though, on the right side of the fairway. Either in the fairway or in the rough. It's far better than on the wrong side of the fairway in the fairway. Lots of overhanging limbs, trees in the way. Depends on where they put the hole, uh, the actual hole on uh, or the, the, the pin on that particular hole on that particular day about how you play the hole. It's a very reactive golf course. It's a golf course that minimises the effect of power off the tee, brute, brute force. This is not a Bombers golf course in any way, shape or form. Fitzpatrick, Spieth, Sink, Simpson, C.T. Pan, the last five winners here. Now, in terms of strokes gain, so that's the course, the weather. It's, they're saying 50, 10 to 15, might be 21 of the days. Not a lot of rain in the forecast apart from Sunday. The, the temperatures do drop on Sunday. Apart from that, it's warm, it's compliant, it's going to be nice and scorable. From a strokes gained perspective, let's take you through that. We are looking at a golf course that does not favour overly outright bombing. So, looking at the winners back to 2016 and looking at the positions that those champions finished in across the strokes gained uh, different skill set numbers and then average that through from 2016 through to Matt Fitzpatrick in 2023. Strokes gained off the tee, 29th. Strokes gained on approach, 10th. Around the green 17th, so meaningful again this week around the green game. You can putt, though, from off the green here. The Texas wedge is definitely in play. Strokes gain T to green 5th. Strokes gain putting 19th. So let's compare that to last week. 11th for off the T at the Masters, 29th this week. 7th for approach, 10th this week. 4th for around the green, 17th this week. Second for tee to green, fifth this week. And 18th for putting, this week it is strokes game putting 19th. If you actually look at the raw numbers, 3.56 uh, strokes per round gained tee to green. Only 0.74 gained on the greens across the same, uh, I think that's the last three to four years of champions here. 
80% tee to green, 20% putting. This is not, as we saw a few weeks ago, where, remember, Stefan Jaeger took down Scotty Scheffler at Memorial Park. This is not a scenario where you can be gaining more um, strokes with the putter than you can with your tee to green gain. Uh, looking at that from a traditional stat statistics perspective, strokes gained uh, driving accuracy. Let's just work through these numbers. These go back to, for reference, Brand Brendan Grace or Brandon Grace in 2016. We've got driving distance 38th in the field of those that made the cut. Driving accuracy 44th. There is this fallacy that you need to be Short and accurate here. You don't. Greens and regulation, 22nd. It's very magnolia. Proximity to hole, 20th. Scrambling, 9th. Again, I did say short game. Putting average, 17th. So, putts per GIR, 17th. Last year, Matt Fitzpatrick, 15th for driving distance. 59th for fairways hit. Uh, 26th for greens and regulation. 54th for proximity to hole. 4th for scrambling. Second for putts per GIR. Very, very short game trend, uh, uh, trending on that one. Uh, Speed the year before. Ninth for greens in regulation. Ninth for proximity. Complete antipathy. Sixth for scrambling again. He was 40th for putts per greens in regulation. There you go. One thing I will say, and it is noticeable. Players that have got a longer game, but that aren't outright bombers. The kind of, not the John Rahms, if you like, but a Fitzpatrick, a Spieth. This year, you'd look at someone's numbers like a Sahith Tagala. Those are the players that are very much in play this week. Longish, can get it out there, but have a fantastic approach and around the green game. Hot putter. Never a bad thing. Let's take you through this week's. Uh, let's take you through this week's predictor model. As ever, I haven't actually prepared for this. You know, you you guys watch this most weeks. If you're new to the channel, don't forget follow me on X at Bamford Golf. 300 likes this week would be fantastic. We have a predictor model at Golf Betting System. You can come and use it completely free of charge. Some really good data on there this week. Who over the last five years has putted best on Bermuda grass greens with POA Trivialist Overseed? Where are you going to get that elsewhere for free? Top 10 of this week's predictor model. These prices are from Bet365. 10, Sam Burns, 35 to 1. 9, Justin Thomas, 40 to 1. 8, Jason Day, 50 to 1. 7, Colin Morikawa, 20 to 1. Six, Matt Fitzpatrick, 20 to 1, the defending champion. Five, Siwoo Kim. It's Bermuda grass. Why not? 35 to 1, we bet 365 for Siwoo Kim. Four is Tommy Fleetwood. Played really well last week. 20 to 1. Never won in the United States. Three, Patrick Cantlay, 16 to 1, we bet 365. Two, Scotty Scheffler, the 4 to 1 favourite. Number one, it's a statistical model. Not overly onerous on driving distance. Kind of all round. You got it. Xander. And Xander is actually 200 points better than Scotty. So finished, uh, I think he was third last year. Finished higher than Scotty Scheffler last year. Xander Schaffelli. Right, I know a lot of you listen for my strokes gained rankings. I take the last eight weeks on the DP World Tour, the PJ Tour, and the Live Tour when we're doing majors. And we just look at who, across the various skill sets that they need to be good at, are going well entering the tournament. Strokes gained on approach, as per most weeks, is vital. Here's the top 12. I put the preview in the description box below here on the video. You can get full 25, uh, 25 rankings across all of these skill sets. I'm going to take you through the top 12. On approach, a tie for 12th, Jake Knapp, Rory McIlroy, Andrew Putnam, and Sahith Tigala. 11, Lucas Glover. Paul Williams has put him up this week on the, DP, on the PGA 
Oh, I'll get there eventually. On the Golf Betting System podcast. Ten is Xander. Nine is Ludwig Oberg. What a play last week. Eight, Justin Thomas. Still got the approach game. Six, Austin Eckroat tied with Cam Young. Young's got a runner-up finish here. Five, Will Zalatoris. A tie for third, Corey Connors and Tom Hoagie. We know he's a great approach player. Two, Scotty Scheffler. One, sponsor's invite. Very late in the day, very annoying. Shane Lowry. Not for Shane, just the PGA Tour. Not telling people out there that Shane Lowry had been entered once all of the betting markets had been set up. Fantastic from the PGA Tour, that one. Right, around the green. I think that's important this week. Top 12 again. Some different names here. 12, Adam Schenk. He played well last week. The sword, you know. 11, Jason Day. 10, Stefan Jaeger. 9, Ricky Fowler. 8, Andrew Putnam. 7, Tommy Fleetwood. 6, Harris English. A tie for fourth. Taylor Moore playing great golf. Xander Schofle. Three is Siwoo Kim. Two, Mackenzie Hughes. You'd expect Jordan Speed to be top, but he isn't. Number one, Scotty Scheffler. T to green, top 12. 12, a tie. Lucas Glover and Taylor Moore. 11, uh, sorry, a tie for ninth. Wyndham Clark. I don't think this is a Clark Cat track overly. Corey Connors, Austin Eckroat, a Chris Kirk, I do think, and we know it is an RBC heritage, is very much a Harbour Town Chris Kirk t- um, um, track. Seven, Rory, not sure. Six, Cam Young. Five, Ludwig Oberg. I think he plays everywhere. Uh, the fact that he won the RSM Classic is a very big positive. I do see a lot of translation between Sea Island, where they play the RSM, and here. Four, Siwoo Kim. Playing some great stuff. Three, Xander. Two, Shane. Number one, Scotty Scheffler. If Shane could find the putter this week, huge danger. Strokes game putting. Let's go through the top 12 of that. 12 is Peter Malnati and Adam Schenk. 10, Wyndham Clark. This is so, so scary. Wyndham Clark and Scotty Scheffler now in the top 10 for strokes game putting last eight weeks. He used to be Mr. No Putt. 9 is Xander. 8 is Brian Harmon. 7, Tom Hoagie. So great approach playing a good putter at the moment. Hoagie's one to watch. uh, 6, Russell Henley. Five, Max Homer. A tie for third, Christian Bezadenhout and Jason Day. Two, of course, it's Denny McCarthy. Number one, defending champion. Best for strokes game putting of those that made the cut last week at the Masters. Matt Fitzpatrick. Top 12 strokes game total. So this is basically who is playing the best golf right now. 12 is Corey Connors. Don't see how. Uh, a tie for 8th. Wyndham Clark, Matt Fitzpatrick, Taylor Moore, Cam Young. 7, Sahith Degala. 6, Siwoo Kim. 5, Shane Lowry. 4, Rory McIlroy. 3, Ludwig Oberg. 2, Xander. I don't even need to say number 1, do I? Scotty Scheffler. Winning odds. I know that we had a guy the other week that said this is completely irrelevant, but I don't think it is. Interestingly enough, last week, Scotty Scheffler, the 4-1 to favourite to win the Masters, he was now the fifth of the last six winners to be 16-1 to or less winning the Masters. Fitzpatrick last year, 28-1. to Spieth, 33 to 1. Sink, 150 to 1. Simpson, 30 to 1. Bearing in mind, we are on a PGA Tour world where no one sub 50 to 1 has won a PGA Tour event this year, apart from Scotty Scheffler. 28 to 1, 33 to 1, 30 to 1, three of the last four winners. Does it change this week? 
official world golf ranking of those winners. Always an interesting angle. Fitzpatrick, 16. Spieth, 20. Sink, 115. Simpson, 9. Kadira, even Satoshi Kadira, 46th. There's a 113 and a 115 in there. So, four of the last six in the world's top 50. Three of the last four, ninth. 16th and 20th. I don't like players at the RBC Heritage who were in the white hot heat of Sunday at the Masters. Just don't like it. Matt Kuchar did that back in 14, I think. Finished third at the Masters, or was it? I think he started third on Sunday, finished fifth, won this, or finished fourth, won this. The only one. And that is so Matt Kuchar, who literally has to finish 10th, finish 8th, finish 5th, finish 3rd, then he wins. Very Ricky Fowler-esque. Do I see anyone doing that this week? I don't, personally. So I've gone for players that were there or thereabouts last week, or even players that missed the cut. Does not bother me. We see a lot like Jordan Spieth two years ago. Missed the cut at the Masters. Win this. Right, first up for me, I know I'm encroaching here and I know we don't get winners at this at this price point, but it's going to happen at some point this, this uh, 2024. Don't forget, follow me on X at Bamford Golf. 300 likes, please. And wouldn't it be fantastic to get 4,500 subscribers to the channel before we hit the PGA Championship in a couple of weeks' time? I'm on Patrick Cantlay. Two and a half points each way. I have to say, bet Fred this week. Eight places each way of 50 odds via their pick your places market. And the prices were outstanding. So if you go to bet Fred, uh, you can sign up to a bet £10, get £50 in free bets and bonuses offer via golf betting system. And why wouldn't you? £40 of free bets plus a £10 slots bonus. On top of that, uh, key T's and Z's available at the website, of course. They had great prices, and I could select an eight places each way uh, market, where most have gone six or five this week. So, well done, Bet Fred. Cantley, he was fringy top. He almost top ten another major. I know it's hard to. I know that's hard to understand with Patrick Cantley. He'd never do that, uh, not contending a major. And then when you look back three weeks later, three years later, he got a top ten. But he went. Double bogey, bogey, bogey to finish, I believe. Or Yeah, double bogey, 16, bogey, 17, bogey, 18. Not a great finish, Patrick. But, T to green game was great. The driving was better, not brilliant. The approach play was fantastic. And his record here is crazily good. Third, seventh, third, second, third. 2022 second, 2023 third. Mad. Superb Pete Dye player, a Pete Dye winner with his twin, Xander, at the uh, Zurich team event a couple of years ago at TPC Louisiana. The sort. Horribly out of form. Find something at the Masters. Takes this out. Patrick Cantlay, two and a half points each way. 18 to one I got with Bet Fred Monday afternoon. Eight places each way. I do like these. I do like Betfred, and I like having them as a bookmaker that I can tap into because their pick your place eight places market does offer some great prices and those additional spots as well. I'm on Will Zalatoris as well. Two points each way, twenty five to one with Betfred, eight places each way on Will. Team No Putt was in the hunt Thursday, in the hunt Friday, got blown away Saturday, came back on Sunday. Team no putt in effect this week. He is a winner on the PGA Tour. Only the one victory that came at the St. Jude Championship. Played at TPC Southwind. That's a medium length par 70 featuring Bermuda Grass Greens. I love that correlation. That event was, again, another one of these events where 80% of, of your score is tee to green, 20% putting. He has done it. He can do it. I'm on Will Zalatoris. He played here once. He described this course. I love it. It's really good for me. It's obviously pretty tight. 
You put it on the right side of the fairways, you're going to have to shape it around some trees. But I'm not afraid to shape the golf ball. I really love this place. The problem was, uh, well, it wasn't a problem as such. He shot 68, 67. He was 11th heading into the weekend on his first ever visit here to Harbour Town. The trouble was he'd finished on the Sunday previously second and almost won the Masters. And that's what I don't like. Frazzled guys. So Zalatoris this week coming off a backdoor ninth. Like it. 25 to 1. Bet Fred. Eight places each way via there. Pick your place market on Willie Z. Uh, this guy is in the top 20 in the world. He's 17th. I've been following him recently to no effect. But again, a quiet 45th last week at the Masters. A quiet 28th in Texas at the Houston Open the week, uh, two weeks before that. I was on him at 20 to 1. I'm on him at 28 to 1. Again, we bet Fred eight places each way of 50 odds. Uh, they pick your place market. If you bet the default market, it's five places in a quarter. Pick the pick your places market on the right hand side. Eight and a fifth. I think you can also have ten and a sixth, but not interested in that. Or ten and an eight, not interested in that at all. Sahit Tagala. Top five finish here last year when actually finishing in the top ten at the Masters. I like the way that with Sahith winning a signature event, a signature level event would be validation for him. I really think that. I think he's in the market for a win very soon. And Bay Hill, Scottsdale, Sawgrass, Muirfield Village, River Highlands, TPC, Southwind, Sea Island. Wherever I've seen good correlation with the likes of a Simpson, a Spieth, a Fitzpatrick, a Stuart Sink, Tigala has a top 10 finish there. So Tigala, 28 to 1, beautiful price point as we know for the winner of this. One and a half points each way. Following current trends, don't forget, at Bamford Golf on Twitter if you're still with me. And let me know who you are backing in the comment section. It's all good for that algorithm. I've gone for two at 70 to one. Again, Betfred have cleared the board with me. Eight places each way at 50 odds on both. We haven't seen any sub 50 to 1 winners in 2024 apart from Scotty Sheffer. That will change, but it hasn't changed until this point. 70 to 1, very much in play. Sepp Straka, you know I love him on Bermuda grass. He's a quality player. 16th last week at the Masters was his best finish ever around Augusta National. He was second at the Open Championship, the major before, becoming a real player. His list of Bermuda grass finishes is insane, and that includes Bermuda grass overseeded with that Poa Trivialis. First and fifth at PGA National, ninth at Sawgrass, second at TPC Southwind. I love that as a correlating golf course. Sixth for 72 hole scoring at East Lake. Second at the Country Club of Jackson at the uh, Jackson, uh, what's it called? The Sanderson Farms. Second last year at the Hit and Giggle at Albany, the Hero World Challenge. He's had a fourth and a fifth at Houston. He's had a fourth at PGA West. They are poet trivialist overseeded greens as well. He's finished third here two years ago. What is there not to like? 11th for strokes gained off the tee. 11th for strokes gained on approach. 8th for both strokes gained ball striking and tee to green last week at Augusta. This golf course suits him far better. Harbour Town Golf Links. Augusta National. That's where we're at with Sepp Strucker. And finally, I know there's been an avalanche of money on him. Thankfully... I think I was the first guy out with a betting preview. Not irregular, that. There was an 80 to 1 out there. I know Paul Williams took it on the Golf Betting System podcast. I took 70 to 1 with Bet Fred. Eight places each way. Three time winner on the PGA Tour. All short courses. A par 70 in there. 
Uh, also, two wins on a par 71 at TPC Summerlin. The par 70 win was at the Wyndham Championship that they play at Sedgefield. Another very good course for correlation. I can take you to Jordan Spieth has finished second at the Wyndham. Stuart Sink 14th. And we know that Webb Simpson is Mr. Wyndham Sedgefield Country Club. Tom Kim shot the best round of Sunday at the Masters. A minus 6, 66. I know he was out early, but it still wasn't an easy golf course. He's got a third at the 2022 Genesis Scottish Open. They played out of the Renaissance in Scotland. Fifth at the 2023 Century Tournament of Champions at Kapalua. And second, you might remember, last year at Hoylake at the Open Championship. He loves... The smell of sea salt in the nostrils. I know this isn't a genuine coastal course. It's a Carolina course. But the 17th plays towards the coast. 18th is a linksy type of hole. I think it's going to suit him down to the ground. He missed the cut here last year. I don't think he will this year because there is no cut. Tom Kim hit 15 of 18 greens on Sunday. He was 11th for off the tee. Second for approach. First for tee to green on that particular round. I know it's 18 holes. But you have to watch these trends. Tom Kim at 70 to 1. Sepp Strucker at 70 to 1. Sahith Tagala at 28 to 1. Will Zalatoris at 25 to 1. And Patrick Cantlay at 18 to 1. All with Betfred. Don't forget, bet 10, get 50 available via Golf Betting System. Click on the link below to my preview. Follow me on Twitter at Bamford Golf. Let's hit 300 likes. It's been great having your support. Let me know who you're backing this week at the RBC Heritage. No show next week. Week off. Thank the Lord. I need it. I'll be back for the week after, which I believe is the AT&T Byron Nelson. Have yourself a great betting week at the RBC Heritage this week. See you later.